How's everybody doing? This is Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish, and today we are going to tie one of my favorite bugs to fish, which is a caddis pupa. And this happens to be my pupa de jour. So in the vise, we've got a core 1120 size 12. The bead on here is a 1 8 inch uh, hairline brass, dazzle brass bead in black. And I'm going to add some wraps of non lead 0.015 wire and I'm looking for seven wraps and the number seven because it's prime just like this bug so let's trim out that wire in both the front and then use the rounded inner portion of your scissors to just kind of roll that over and make sure it's not going to be a sharp edge and then we'll repeat that process with the back portion so when we start our thread, we're not going to cut it right away. We'll have to work at it a little bit to, to cut our thread. Roll that edge over and make sure it's pushed firmly into the back of that bead. And now we're going to start with some ultra thread. And this is a yellow olive and it's 70 denier. And just get that started behind the wire. Wrap down, trim out the tag end. And then we'll wrap those non-lead wire wraps down and secure them. Again, first pass some loose wraps with 45 degree angle and we'll do it one more time and then on this third pass we'll get some wraps that go in between each wrap and pulls all those loose thread wraps in between each wire wrap and really secures it down. Alright, so we're going to have a couple elements to tie in here and then once they're tied in, it's just a matter of wrapping one after the other and we're going to create a nice little caddis pupa. So here I've got some V-rib. This is the size midge and the color is clear. So when I tie this in, I'm looking at that end where I've cut it there and I want the curved section or the part that makes the bottom of the V against the hook shank so that when we wrap it will expose that curved edge and let me just turn this just slightly we're going to use almost all of it to where the vise is going to meet the hook shank there there we go and now our next element we have some wire and this is ultra wire so it's copper brown the size small but when I tie this in I want to tie it in uh, on my side and there's a reason so when I start wrapping the the v-rib get it all wrapped up since the wires on my side when I begin I can get uh, right in between the first and second wraps and again I'm gonna butt this up against where I finish tying off my weighted wire it will sit on my side of the v-rib and Everything is going to work out great for us if you keep those few things in mind. So now, one last element to tie in here. And this is some saltwater flashaboo. And this is chartreuse. And let's get that tied in down here. This can be, you know, top of the shank, side of the shank. That really doesn't matter for, for this part. And just make sure it's tied in very securely. And then some cleaning thread wraps as we go back up behind the bead here. Pretty solid underbody with our thread and everything is in position. So again, we've got flash. We've, then we're gonna follow that flash with our V-rib and finally with our wire rib. So let's just start wrapping here. I'm gonna turn this slightly to get that first wrap. Make sure we're covering up those thread wraps like so. At this point, as I apply pressure, I'm going to overlap each wrap by maybe one half. And it's not that I'm doing that intentionally, it's just if you're giving this steady tension, this flash will do it for you. There's a happy place where it wants to sit and don't fight it, just use that firm, consistent tension as you wrap 
and you will have no issues. Couple wraps over, pull that flash back, couple wraps on top, and I can get rid of it like so. So now we'll get our V rib started. And the same thing, I'm gonna turn it and just make sure I get this started right where I want it. So you can see that second wrap right there and it's already trapped our wire so that we don't have to fight it. Now when I'm wrapping this V-rib, I don't want a lot of tension and you'll be able to see here, I'm going to start leaving a little space between each wrap. And I mean just enough to notice so that when we wrap that wire, there's plenty of room for it to go in between. And you could absolutely tie this without the wire, but all you would get is a, a shinier body and less, less of a segmented look. I happen to really enjoy the segmented look and I like the contrast that the wire gives. So a couple trapping thread wraps, pull up and get a couple in the front. And now that V-rib has nowhere to go, so we can just clip it out. And now we've got our wire. So make sure that first one is in between your first two V-rib wraps. And then from there, it's just a matter of kind of following the spaces that you created. That first couple there are going to be a little snug, but that's okay. And then from there, just feed it in between, in between, in between. And there's nothing to it. And you can see we're going to have a pretty buggy look at the end of this. All right, so there's our wire right behind the bead. Three wraps to trap. Pull that wire back over itself and get a couple thread wraps on top. And now we can trim that out. Make sure you push down on that little tag end of wire with your thumbnail and get a couple securing thread wraps there. So now let's come back roughly one third of this body. So we're going to have two-thirds of abdomen to one-third of thorax, which is just about normal. So now, to get that real buggy effect of, of a pupa, uh, when they're inside of that case and they just break out, their wings, their legs, everything else is folded very tightly against the body. And so when this CDC feather that I've, I've trimmed by the, the tip, and I'm going to tie that in with the concave side facing the body so that as we wrap everything flows toward the rear of the fly. But yeah, when when these guys break out of that shuck or case, you know, they're they're very compact and, and kind of mushed in there. So when they are in the pupating or pupating stage, all these you know little pieces and parts are are being released and and finally breaking free for the first time so it's not exactly you know the, the prettiest of looks however what we're going to do here today is going to emulate that very closely so now as i'm wrapping this i'm grabbing both sides of the fibers here on both sides of the quill and just making sure that they're coaxed backward toward the the hook point and you know three four wraps is all we're going to need and you could go more sparse if you like and go uh, you know real crazy on the cdc if you really wanted to so there's like three and a half wraps let's tie that off a couple in the front and now i can trim out this tag end of our cdc feather and we are just about done it's a pretty simple fly once you get used to tying the elements in wrapping them all up there's not much else that goes on here so let's finish this thorax and and we'll be ready to go fishing. So for the thorax, we are going to use some Arizona Diamond Dub and this is dark olive. I'll show you guys here in a second. So that's going to give us some some nice contrast to the lighter tones in the body and in those legs slash wing. And for this, Keep it very, very thin because it, there's not a lot of space here that we need to cover up. Uh, it's, it's not a, a huge thorax we're looking for. It's just that contrast between the body and, and the, the head and thorax parts that we're trying to replicate. And this does have some flash in it too. 
So we've got the added bonus of a little bit more uh, attention grabbing. And uh, right about there, I'm gonna start coming back up. Get all that goodness right behind the bead. Pull back with your fingertips and get a couple extra thread wraps right like that. Now, all we need to do are two whip finishes. And this bug is done. And for those of you that watch me tie a lot, you, you'll know that anything under 20 minutes is a fast fly in my world. So, welcome to Pete's Fast Fly. And trim out that tag. So real quick here, let's just kiss these thread wraps with a little bit of Loon Hardhead Clear. And almost let it slip off the back side of that bead where it's curved and it'll get right on those thread wraps without getting into your semi or excuse me diamond dub and it'll stay away from all those the tips of the fibers on the CDC and if you've ever had CDC meat head cement it's not a very good outcome all right so now one little thing here I do like to make sure the bodkin's clean and get in and just hand pick a few fibers out from that diamond dub. Be patient. Nothing crazy. Once you get a few loosened up, that's probably all it takes. I'm happy with that. So now, one last thing we're going to do is get this bad boy wet so you can see just how much of a a poopa imitation this really is and there we go poopa du jour a la pete and i hope you guys enjoy this one i really hope you tie it up because this is a very buggy fish catcher if you enjoy this uh, as always we we do appreciate if you could hit a uh, like and click subscribe down there and if you have any comments be sure to leave them below and we will address them Thanks guys for watching and we will see you on the water.